Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to another tournament report. It's It's been a good while since I've done anything for this channel and that's probably not going to change but uh, I did go to a tournament and figured I could try and make a report of it so here we are. The tournament I went to was uh, the Tag Team 2023 at the Games of Westridge. Held every year uh, you bring Two ar armies play, play uh, both at the same table, uh, two small armies that is, and the tables all have unique and quite wacky scenarios as we will see. So I will tell you about all the five games that we uh, I had, me and my partner, and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So this is the list that we brought, the Tunnel Knights and the Sainted Rats. Um, you can pause here and have a look. I won't go through it in detail. Um, I will go through it briefly when we see our deployment. Um, here's just a quick pick of my portion of the army. And this is the table for the first game and you can pause here and read it but I wouldn't recommend it because uh, this is not really how it functioned. Uh, um, yeah, I'll just summarize it quickly for you. Um, there's a, in the center there's a, a ru ruin of the table where you can go to and deposit markers and each of your scoring units starts with one of these markers. All your other units can go to an, uh, a piece of impassable terrain um, well, at the edge of your deployment zone um, and gain one of these markers and then you can take them to the center and deposit them. At the end of the game the player who has uh, or the Alliance who has deposited the most markers wins the uh, scenario, the sec secondary objective. And there's also uh, a mirror effect that triggers in each uh, magic phase, which switches the characteristics of characters. Um, friend, uh, and if uh, uh, you're in contact with an enemy character, you will switch um, your stats with that character during each magic phase. And we'll see how that plays into the game. So this is the opponent's deployment, who you can see the ruin in the middle uh, and the zone where you can deposit these markers. And up to the right over here we have the their um, terrain piece where they can gain these markers as well. So they are playing Undying Dynasties and Vampire Covenant, the Undead Alliance. And we can see here this is after oh, halfway through their uh, vanguard and scouting. So we have a Varkulak and Direwolves over here, they did Vanguard up both pretty ag aggressively. Skeletons, uh, the Zombies with two Wizards, one Hierarch and one Necromancer. Um, nothing too fancy about them, I think they were Adepts. Um, and nothing. Uh, one had the Sense Stormcloak, what it's called, so he could fly away and do some slashing attacks. The big unit of Necropolis Guard, uh, they are ter Terracotta, the whole uh, uh, Undying Dynasty's part, and they also have a Vampire and a Pharaoh in this unit. The Vampire is a real piece of work, he has the God Slayer, or she has the God Slayer rather, the Lamia Vampire, and also the, um, is it the Yakel's Yackel, <coughs> sorry, the Yakel's Blessing, which gives them uh, two extra health points. The Pharaoh isn't that particular, I think. Um, the Mask of Teput, of course, uh, and such. Uh, so, the Lamia Vampire also has Commandment, so this combo gives them like effective offensive defensive 9 on the unit or something something insane like that, because they set the offensive defensive 6 with the Vampire's Commandment and then boost it with the Undying Will, and then uh, nerf the offensive skill of the opponent, and the, in addition they also had Occultism, so they can mess with that further, so yeah. Um, quite a Death Star there. Uh, also some Skeleton Chariots, Terracotta as well, some Great Bats, an another Vark Varkulak, and the Scouts. We can see close up of their deployment. And our deployment. So we have a Mouse Rifle, some Feudal Knights with the Lord. And this Lord, as I, I said, their Lord was a piece of, piece of work. This guy is insane. Uh, he's sainted and on a revered Unicorn. He has honor, so he gets two extra attacks when charging, um, but only charging to the front. And also when charging alone, he has an extra swift stride, so to say. 
uh, four dice, pick the two highest. And he has the secrets of the Doomblade. So effectively, when he charges, he has eight attacks. Strength, uh, oh, almost always hitting a two up because he has good offensive skill and a plus one to hit from uh, being sated. And then strength 10, AP 3, and D6 health points, divine attacks. Um, he does a lot of damage. The Feudal Knights, uh, that's not Feudal Knights actually, I've written it wrong here, sorry about that. There's a Knights request, uh, and they have a standard with the Relic Shroud and a Champion. Then next we have my Black Fur Veterans with a Swarm Priest. Um, Scorched Alchemist and a Sacred Reliquary. The Alchemist gives them Light Reflexes, and he also has uh, the Sacred Chalice, uh, which gives them Magic Resistance, and um, each time the unit is targeted by a spell, we gain a mail token. And I think throughout the tournament, this didn't come effect into effect ever. Nobody targeted the unit. Um, Actually, now when I said say that, I think they did during this game, but uh, we forgot about it. Whatever. Um, the uh, Alchemist also has a flamethrower, the fire thrower, and uh, the toga to stand in the second rank. The swarm priest, unfortunately, couldn't have a toga. He can only have one in the size, so he stands there um, pretty unprotected. But he has the rod of battle and the book of arcane masters. So he has a lot of spells. This combo with putting the Sacred Reliquary in them is quite nice. They get to five in, fight in five ranks, as long as they are steadfast. And they have four uh, dice, take the lowest two for discipline checks. So that's nice. Uh, they, of course, have, have the Eagle Standard. Next to them, we have some Yasales. Uh, actual Feudal Knights this time, uh, with a Damsel in them. Uh, she ro is rocking Shamanism. My Swarm Priest has uh, Witchcraft. Next we have some rotary guns and the giant rats. Also off the table we have another unit of feudal knights with the tunneling standard as well as um, 15 shadow first stalkers with throwing weapons. And we also have two assassins that can pop up in the black for veterans or in the shadow first stalkers. So uh, here we can see deployment from another, another angle. Um, we messed up big time here with our deployment. We didn't think about them, have, or actually we didn't, didn't think about them going first. So we just let them vanguard and then move up out of sight of everything. Uh, so that's exactly what they did. We can focus on this flank first. So they vanguarded and moved up like this, threatening the cannon. And all we could do really was uh, move the um, questing knights to look at them. Uh, at least let them something in return. Um, the Lord moved out of the unit, as you can see, he's up top now. Moved 20 with the Revered Unicorn, it's very nice. Uh, shooting, we put two wounds on the uh, Barkulak with the cannon. But then they charged and killed the cannon. Uh, this, they are not in combat with the Knights here, uh, and uh, then they overran the scouts, just moved out of sight. Um, so did the Varkulak, and the scouts weren't relevant for the rest of the game. The Varkulak was later fired upon by the Yasales, uh, causing one more wound. And then they, he charged the Yasales, survived the standard shoot, did three wounds in a combat, and then he was killed by the Yasales. So that, that was nice. This was a bit later though, but uh, we've handled that flank now. So let's look at the other flank. Uh, they moved up aggressively here too, with the Varkulak. Uh, the direwolves moved up a bit, uh, but we charged, charged them in the first turn just to get rid of them. Not the perfect position to be in with those knights, but whatever. Um, the uh, rotary guns moved up to the flank here and uh, open fired on the Varkulak. They didn't kill it this turn, but I think uh, the Varkulak charged and killed the, the rats, and then the turn after we shot it to death. Um, yes. The skeletons moved up to counter the knights. We couldn't do, really do anything but charge them. Was combat for a few turns. We killed a bunch. We killed some, some in return. Eventually, the knights broke and fled and were caught. Uh, not so good for them. Unfortunately, my Shadowfur Stalkers had popped up behind them. Uh, one of the 
uh, tunnel markers and they panicked them. were also removed. Not ideal. So, uh, those are the two flanks. Let's focus on the middle. So as I said, the Lord le left the unit, moved up to the top of this image. Here we can see uh, the rest of the board. So they moved up, pushed up into the center a bit. I uh, moved my uh, uh, Black Fur veterans just to the edge of the zone to drop the objective marker. And then I think we put some, yeah, we put a lot of battle on, my, on me to boost us a bit. Uh, shooting didn't see much on the, the main part of the force. Uh, they decided to charge with both the Necropolis Guard and the Chariots. Had to end up like this to maximize contact. And this is where the fun begins because both their characters, the Pharaoh and the Vampire, are to the right of their unit. So over here, after the, of the image, where I also very purposely put my Swarm Priest. So now the mirror, mirror effect kick, kicks in and I switch uh, profile with one of these characters randomize and I end up the vampire's profile. Which is nice, it's a good profile. Uh, I managed to kill one or two uh, of the ter terracotta guard with that. Uh, but the really good part is the vampire ended up with my profile, the swarm priest profile, which is resilience to health point two. So all of these um, blackfire veterans here picked up their halberds and started poking at the vampire and killed it in a single turn. So that was very, very nice. Um, and my Swarm Priest even survived. Then the turn after it switched again, so now the Pharaoh ended up with the vampire's profile and I got, I got the Pharaoh's profile. Which was good because he cost... Um, by now he cost three health point losses to me, but I had four health points, so I was fine. But to turn after we switched again, and then I ended up with three health point points and three wounds, so then I was just outright killed. <clears throat> but as we'll see, that doesn't really matter in the end. Uh, in their uh, turn there, they also moved up the bats here to chaff the lord. The combat moves on. I put some wounds on them and they kill a lot, lot of rats in return. We use the Aegis um, Orison a lot to protect, protect the unit, but eventually we switch to the uh, Discipline uh, Orison to um, make sure that I stick around. I also pop up my Assassins to help get some kills in. And we pop up the Knights from the tun Tunnel Marker over here, and the Knights of the Quest down in the corner here are also facing this uh, the chariots right now. Uh, things move on. My unit is almost gone. This is at the end of their uh, combat phase. Uh, they win that combat, but I stick around, and then they reform the chariots to face all of these knights coming from the uh, right hand side, and all the both the. Feudal Knights, the Quest Knights, and the Lord charge into the Chariots, and the Lord kills them, all, all five of them outright, just like that. And then he overruns into the zombies. This is the aftermath of that. Um, so he goes into so the zombies, the Necropolis Guard and the Pharaoh crumble away. <laughs> the Swarm Priest actually gets to keep his, prof his profile in the end. Uh, no, not the Swarm Priest, this is the House Prefect. Uh, the Swarm Priest is dead now, as is all of the unit, but the uh, House Prefect is alive with the Pharaoh's profile, uh, just for funsies. And this is the last picture that we took. Um, in the end here, we did kill the zombies, maybe the skeletons as well, I think so. Um, but we didn't catch the characters who had moved out by now. Uh, the, the wizards, so they stored some points there, and we lost a few as well, but we did win on points. They won the uh, secondary objective, uh, they had four scoring units that managed to get into the, uh, the zone and deposit, we only had three. Uh, so they won that, and in the end it was a 12-8 for us, so a very nice way to start the tournament. Uh, fun game, um, this scenario benefited us massively with this uh, characteristic swapping. And we all did 
a few mistakes, I think. Uh, this was the very first game I played with Wormiswarm, and uh, the first game I played in a while, so I was a bit rusty. But uh, we had fun, that's what matters, right? So, first game. During the lunch break, there was a competition for best painted army, or other best painted alliance. We entered ours. There was also this one, an Equitane and Zone style alliance with a witch hunter theme. These guys come every year and every year they have a new super cool army theme with a heavy theme and uh, a cool display board and everything. They do really, really well. This year was no exception with this super cool Inquisitor army. And the third entry to the competition was this Equitane and Zornstahl army again. A lot of Equitane, it seems. Uh, really, really beautiful stuff here. With uh, a coherent theme here as well and a nice display board. This army did end up winning the competition. Um, and rightfully so, I'd say. It's a really, really beautiful piece. And I do get to take perhaps a little bit of credit for it, because I did actually paint one of these models. I um, painted up this standard bearer here and uh, as a gift for uh, one of the players command commanding this army. So happy to see that. See that. I'm, I'm, I'm represented. Um, and as it turns out, this was the army that we fought against in the second game. This was the scenario. So in short, we were not allowed to deploy in the flank zones here, uh, so we were forced into the middle. And at the end of each player turn, you had to have scoring units within these four objectives to score points and win the game, basically. Um, this is their army. I have a support unit with spears, uh, heavy infantry in the back there. In front of them are the Pegasus Knights with the, a fo Folk Hero. And this Folk Hero is pretty much made to kill our um, our Equiton Lord. He has Kristen's Resolve, so he deletes or ignores our uh, magic weapon. And he also has the Locket of Sunna, so he takes our stats as well. Uh, I, I think it would turn into a grind. Maybe would he would eventually win that. I'm not entirely sure. But it's not a good uh, matchup anyway, and because they, they nullify our strongest piece. And uh, uh, I realized afterwards, and this is why I didn't, didn't play this way. Uh, if we had gone into com combat, uh, combat with both our units, uh, it would have been fine because the Lord would just have killed all the Pegasus Knights and then uh, won combat because we could take the challenge with. Uh, the champion, but uh, as we'll see, that's not what happened. They also have a wizard on an engine, um, druidism. No, that can't be right. Uh, how did they have druidism? There must there's a da damsel in this unit. I forgot about that. Yeah, there's a damsel in this unit. That's it. Uh, but they had uh, had a wizard on this engine and another arcane engine. Um, I think, yeah, he's, he had cosmology, they managed to double up on both of these spells, so... Um, Perception of Strength and Ice and Fire had um, two of each, one bounce spell and one normal. Then the Imperial, Imperial Guard with the Martial BSP, a Sacred Relica Reliquary, um, as well as a Domsel with Druidism. Some Light Infantry and some Feudal Knights. Not a big army. Um, this is our deployment. deployment. Pretty straightforward. Uh, both the Equitan char characters in this unit this time. Uh, the Classic Knights. And yeah. Close up of their first turn. Yeah, they moved uh, both these chariots to hide behind, behind this piece of impassable train, uh, along with the um, Tristan's Resolve uh, Folk Hero. Uh, all moved up into a conga line to hide from my cannon. Um, and the Pegasus Knights moved out here to score the objective. We moved up a little bit. This, I, I'll tell you this one, this, this report will be pretty short, it didn't take that much many pictures and it's pretty simple what happened. Uh, the flanks were dodgy, we, no one really wanted to commit. Um, 
here especially in hindsight we should have been a lot more aggressive here they did move up to Tristan's uh, guy um, and when facing him alone it, he is a big problem but we could definitely have been more aggressive against this night unit because even though they don't have multiple wounds um, our secrets of the doomblade guy will just go through them anyway uh, so that that was a mistake of ours and uh, the crossbowmans uh, kept shooting at us and killing one night per turn which wasn't good um, in the middle, I tried redirecting the Imperial Guard to at least get the charge. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes out. Um, the um, Shadowfur Stalkers popped up here. Uh, they were pretty useful. Um, they kept shooting at this unit, um, plinking away wounds, but they used Druidism to bring it back all the time. Um, yeah, you can see they're still hiding behind this pillar from my cannon. I got some wounds in with uh, these guys, but uh, again, druidism. If we did any, if we did too much damage, they just recovered it with uh, some spells. Um, the uh, rotary guns took some some shots at this unit, but didn't do much at all, and uh, then they um, fled when they recharged. Um, I should have. Uh, yeah, that was the right choice, we, uh, as we uh, realized this unit also had a really nasty banner that deleted my my ranks, I think, so they would have just killed this unit instantly. Um, I charged in, eventually. Um, we had a terrible magic phase, didn't get any buff spells through. Uh, and we just completely annihilated in combat. Uh, one turn we were dead. Uh, one thing happened here though, they moved the Tristan's Resolve guy up to uh, take out our cannon, they didn't want to hide behind this pillar any, any longer, and the cannon took aim, shot, hit, wounded, failed uh, the AD save, dead. So that was nice. Um, <clears throat> which meant we could be a bit more aggressive here with the knights, um, but in the end I think we... no, we didn't do anything I think. Yeah, we charged the... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Let's see. Uh, we can go through the pictures here pretty fast. Um, yeah, here we can see uh, they just killed our middle unit. These guys charged... Uh, there are just three left. They charged the um, Shadow First Stalkers. And killed them. Um, the Knights eventually charged the Crossbowmen. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but they fled, we didn't catch them. We, uh, we tried to go after the knights instead, uh, but it didn't work out. And this Imperial Guard unit did charge these knights and kill those as well. Um, yeah, uh, that was the last picture. So this didn't go our way at all. The big combat in the middle just was a dud for us. Uh, and we were too hesitant on the flanks, I think. Um, I think it was a tough matchup, for sure, uh, but we could have played a lot better, I, I'm sure. But uh, we did get one point, um, pretty much entirely thanks to that <laughs> lucky shot killing the, the Tristan's result guy. So we did get that at least, but 19-1 uh, to them, fortunately. Let's move on to the third game at once. Um, so. This is the first time we were able to drop to go first. I uh, didn't take a picture of the scenario, but uh, those who are uh, big fans of my channel uh, will recognize this table, because this is the bridge. Um, I'll summarize the scenario uh, here uh, anyway. So we're deploying sideways, going on the length, uh, length uh, of the table, 24 inches in, so we're 24 inches apart. And uh, the objective is to have as many scoring units as possible on top of the bridge at the end of the game. The bridge is impassable terrain, the edges, you can't go off them, you can't fly up. Um, you get plus one to hit when shooting at un units on the bridge. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So we deployed like this. Um, characters spread out again. Lord with the questing knights in the forest because they are a strider thanks to the unicorn. Uh, they deployed like this, Ogres and Sylvanels, a cool alliance. So they have a shapeshifter down here. Um, he was pretty nasty, can't 
really recall. Oh yeah, he had Kakarai's Maul, um, the ogre weapon, so that was pretty cool. Uh, some Kestro Knights, Wild Huntsmen, um, Tribesmen, nothing fancy about them really. Dryads, more Dryads, Eagle, Pathfinders, uh, Sylvan Archers, Bombardiers with a Shaman of Pyromancy, Master, uh, a Giant with a Club, and the Tusker Cav. So obviously our uh, Equitan Lord with Secrets of the Doomblade has a lot of, lot of nice targets in this game. Um, this flank we didn't deploy much on this side of the table, so this was a, uh, was a problem uh, that we're, we're gonna have to handle somehow. Um, this is after their vanguard, so they moved up aggressively here. And as we can see, we don't have a lot to uh, counter with there. Although we do have a tunnel marker uh, for that specific purpose, and another over here. Um, yeah. So we had we had the first turn. Um, we can we'll focus on this flank for now. Um, in our first turn, we sh shot with the assails on the Kester, not the Kestrel Knights, the Wild Huntsman, killed three of them. Very nice. Um, this unit, I think I just backed up a little bit, or did I? Yeah, I think I just backed up a little bit, um, and that's about it. Uh, in their turn, they moved up aggressively, as we can see here. Um, then it's our turn again, our counter was to actually go on the aggressive with the giant rats here. Uh, they charged in like this. Um, this unit reformed instead to face uh, the, the oncoming threat. Not that they would be there very long, but um, there was nothing go going up the bridge on their side, so we could take our time to deal with this, uh, at least. Um, we buffed the rats, both with an Orison token, plus one to hit. And I think we got some spell through as well, to buff them a little bit. Uh, and it turned out well. Um, we lost two rats, as you can see here. And I think we did, did one wound in return. Um, which we could only get two models in contact here, so six attacks, which isn't bad. And it meant that we, I think we won combat actually, because we charged, did one wound and had one rank and they killed two. Um, so we won combat, but they did stick around on discipline nine. Uh, but we reformed to get more attacks into, into uh, the combat. In their turn, they moved the shapeshifter around further. You can see I'm facing this way indeed. The shapeshifter moved to, uh, look at the assails instead. Um, this combat, we'll see, uh, yeah. Um, yes, um, in the second turn, the rats went nuts and killed, um, uh, two of them. I think they did three health points in total. Uh, so yeah, that's good. Um, so there's well, just one castle knight left. Um, and we reformed the unit to face forward again and uh, uh, walked up the ridge a little bit because now they're, the dryads are pushing, start pushing here. Uh, the Castle Knights moved around here, um, didn't want to charge the rats, didn't bother with it, um, so they just wanted to keep moving around. We popped up, oh yeah, and the uh, shapeshifter charged the assails and uh, killed some of them, not all of them, and didn't pursue, he wanted to stick around here, uh, be a threat to this one as well, so these assails are just below here. But in our turn we did pop up the uh, Shadowfire Stalkers and unleashed on this <laughs> single guy here, uh, killing him, so that was nice. The Kestrels are gone, and also by now we have fired another Salvo with the, these guys on the uh, Wild Huntsmen, so they are gone as well. Uh, very, very fortunate for us. Um, yes. And then we have started moving up um, the bridge here, pretty much. Um, I think these guys actually rallied, uh, so they didn't get those points. Um, yeah, here we can see we start moving up the sails. Uh, I think they ra they rallied here as well. <coughs> um, and yeah, this this unit moved. It eventually charged. This was towards the end of the game. Uh, we'll look at the other half of the table after this, but they just plowed through first the dryads and then the ogres, no issue at all. Um, ending up over here. Uh, 
have uh, the assassins in the unit as well to help help out with that. Uh, no issues. So going back to the rest, rest of the table, this is um, after Vanguard again. So our first turn, we push up aggressively uh, with the knights, uh, as you can see here, and uh, we'd put a Raven's Wing on this unit to move it up into shooting range and shot at the um, the ogres here. Um, did some wounds. Uh, yeah, there were three ogres for, to start with, so we killed them, uh, uh, one of them. And they actually failed the panic test. This has been eight. And then the pathfinders also failed the panic test. So both started fleeing, both rallied the turn after, uh, so they were fine, but they did lose some shooting, uh, and the, the, um, and some of the magic was out of range as well, so that, that was very nice for us. Uh, this is after they have rallied, and they mostly has backed away uh, with the Tusker Cav and the Giants. The di Giant, uh, singular rather. Uh, this is how it looked. And... Uh, um, here we have advanced further. Uh, we pushed, pushed up uh, the Tunnel Knights as well. Uh, joined the Lord to that unit instead to get a little bit closer to the Tusker Cav. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, these guys are taking, taking some shooting, but nothing too serious. And <clears throat> here, uh, this is turn three, I guess. Um, the Lord charged out of the unit. I think with this, these guys tried to charge the, uh, the, the uh, this um, unit of uh, archers, but failed. I think they did an eight on Swiss ride, uh, but failed unfortunately. But the Lord did make it into this unit for Tusker Cav, and uh, in this. Yeah, well, let's take that in a moment. Uh, magic, we used um, Swarm of Insects on this eagle here. I managed to uh, cause a panic test to the ogres, the pathfinders, and the archers. All three failed. Discipline eight or nine. Um, but all of them rallied the turn after. So, very weird discipline test this game. This combat is also weird. Uh, they didn't challenge, actually. Um, which I thought was odd, but um, no matter. Uh, eight attacks, hit all, wounded all. They saved three on six up armor save. In the end, doing five wounds with uh, against his unit is about average, so that's nice. Um, rolled quite low on the multiple wounds, so or actually really low. Um, so there was one model left with full health points, the champion. Champion hit back, he just outright killed the Lord. Dead. Um, yeah, here we can see the panic test. A lot of stuff fleeing. And here the Lord is just gone. That's, that was a rough awakening for him. Um, here we can see a uh, sort of overview. Uh, they have rallied everything again. Uh, and in our turn, we try this charge again into the archers. This time we succeeded, kill those. Uh, both these units into the giant, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, we kill those in a turn. Uh, in their turn, they sh uh, charged, they shot at these guys a lot, but they sh also charged with the bombardiers and the tuskers into one of, the, uh, of one unit each here, and the tusker. Just killed that unit of knights. Yeah, he just did that. Uh, with damsel and all. So we lost that, those points. Uh, this combat took a few turns, but eventually we, we won. Let's see how many more pictures there are. Uh, the questy knights um, killed the archers, but then there were very few remaining. They charged the dryads, broke them. They are fleeing now. Uh, they broke in their turn, so in our turn. Uh, we charged them again. They fled off the table, and this guy made a failed charge into ruin and died. Um, so they are gone as well. Uh, and up here we can see 
yeah, we won this combat against the bombardiers, the Tusker, remaining Tusker reformed. He survived all the shooting from a sail, so rallied by now, as well as the cannon. And uh, then he charged these knights and killed them as well. Um, here we can see the charge. Um, and also, somewhere along here, he moved the shapeshifter up into this lake here. And uh, to go after the knights, basically. And we ravens winged the these guys uh, in pursuit and uh, just pummeled him with thrown weapons and he was dead, um, despite the essence of Mithril. And uh, yeah, here we can see we have plowed through the uh, bridge as well, so now we are the only scoring unit on top of it, so we win the scenario. And that, that's pretty much the end of the game. Uh, this unit also managed to survive with the one health point left after the shooting here. So they didn't get those points. And here, the knight, knight is gone after charging into the ruins. So yeah, that's the end of this this game. Um, we killed more, and we got the scenario. It was fairly equal actually in points uh, in the end, uh, because they did kill everything of the equity list except the uh, sacred reliquary. Um, so they got that going for them at least. Uh, so it ended in a 60. Next up is the fourth game um, on the second day and we did have the pa pairings the night before so we spent some time in the evening looking at over the list um, getting a bit worried because it was a scary list that's for sure but um, first we'll have a look at the scenario uh, the portals um, the thing here is that there's uh, an, a global rule that you can exchange power dice for one less uh, veil token, so 2 to 1 instead of 3 to 1. And uh, there's a portal train piece in the middle, and every time you ca cast a spell, you put a counter next to it. Um, every 4 counter that you place creates a uh, backlash on the wizard that cast the spell. Uh, they take 4 hits, strength 4, AP 1. And then you create a Spoils of War token that you can uh, shoot out in a chosen direction and pick up later. And then when you cast the 16th spell of the game, the portal explodes, uh, a final uh, counter is created, and then everything within 18 inches takes 2d6 strength 6 AP2 divine magical flaming attacks. And then the portal is removed. So very spooky scenario and yeah uh, this is the list we faced they had uh, undying dynasties and uh, some uh, demons so we have some skeleton chariots some skeleton archers with the hierophant the hierophant had the mark of the eternal champion and something else not that relevant i think some succubi uh, with mesmerizing plumage the lemurs um, and a sentinel the Sentinel had the Sacred Hourglass and also a Battle Sphinx. In addition, they had two units of um, Scarab Swarms and two Mage Blight Gremlins. Those perceptive of you will have noticed a bit of a combo here with the Sentinel and the scenario, because the Sentinel also reduces the ratio of trading Veil Tokens for Magic Dice. So they are trading at a 1 to 1 ratio. And also should mention their limit of four dice maximum is removed, so they're gonna have a lot of dice. Our deployment looked like this. We focus our shooting uh, to face off, well, most of the army. The uh, Seekers of the so Seekers of the Doomblade Lord went for the chariots, as did the Questing Knights. That was their target as well. And then my Blackford veterans in the center. Uh, have one flank protected through the portal and uh, be able to pick up the tokens, basically. Yeah, they went first and we had deployed purposely to stay out of range for most of their damage spells. So they couldn't, couldn't really do that much. Uh, they moved up though a little bit, focused their spells on protection uh, with the spell their uh, scrying aura. <coughs> But uh, everything else they wanted was that through. They stored six uh, main tokens though, because they didn't need them. They did get a 5-up Aegis on D6. 
the Sphinx, however. We still fo focus shooting on the Sphinx and manage to bring down to one health point remaining. Uh, I forgot to take some pictures, I'll just talk a bit for the, with this picture instead. Uh, yeah, uh, We pushed up a little bit, decided that we didn't care if the skeletons were to charge the questing knights, the uh, lord would still kill most of the unit, so we could push up aggressively there. Um, and yeah, then in their turn they decided to charge, not with the chariots, but with the succubi and the sphinx into my black for veterans. And I hadn't, hadn't really considered that the succubi would be able to reach this turn, but it wasn't that far actually. They needed a 9 with 3 stride and got it. The sphinx needed I think a 7 with 3 stride and failed, uh, so that was pretty lucky for me. Um, and then they popped up both of the Scarab Swarms and redirected a Knight unit each. I think again... No, this is a uh, uh, picture here. Um, this combat here felt quite sweaty with the with the Succubi. I wasn't really sure they, they should be good at plowing through my infantry unit. And we were especially worried when the, we saw the Magic Phase this is the amount of dice that he had. Not tokens, dice. And uh, yeah, so that was nasty. However, as it turned out, they didn't actually have that many um, combat buffs to use in, in this combat. They had scrying, and managed to get that through. They had stars aligned, uh, which we dispelled because we put um, our Aegis with the Orison on the unit. And didn't want to have that negated. And then they actually failed to cast um, the uh, perceptual strength, um, much uh, in part because we had put uh, the uh, twisted effigy, the booster version, on their um, on the archer bunker the turn before. So they didn't get that many spells through. They did manage to heal the sphinx a lot. Uh, so it's back to almost full health, I think. And the combat, as it turned out, didn't go that well for them. I think yeah, we won by like three or something, and they failed the, the test and, and lost some models. But uh, going on to the second round, but I, I was really surprised uh, that it went so well for us. I was counting on sticking around, of course, because we had Discipline 9 and Steadfast and all those good, good things, but uh, we didn't, didn't even need them. Uh, and then we can move on to our turn. Um, this is, I think, part way through the combat phase. Uh, the succubi were killed in the second turn. Our uh, assassins uh, popped up and, and held out, and we got some spells through and uh, uh, good things like that. So uh, they were gone. We also charged the lord into the chariots up top. They is it a challenge. Uh, we had to accept, we killed the champion, overheal, crumble two more. Um, and maybe I, yeah, no, uh, and, and, the, and we charged the Scarab Swarms here with the Feudal Knights. Um, the other one, uh, we were fortunate that they failed to consider the character being able to charge out, so we were able to do, do that. And then we cast um, Raven's Wing on the quest knights to move them up over the uh, scarab swarms and uh, in a posi position where they couldn't be redirected again. And this was the eighth spell cast. You can see there's a marker over here. That's one of the supposed war markers that they placed. Uh, this time we cast the eighth spell, so we got to uh, place the marker and put it in our unit. However, the four hits from uh, the damage on the wizard killed my swarm priest, so he's gone. Uh, but we did get an important spell through, and we did get a marker, so that was nice. Um, this combat, we didn't kill them, but uh, we're doing okay. Um, next up, we have their... Uh, yeah, just more pictures of this. Yeah, this is after the combat, you can see there's still two remaining here. Um, so... They moved, shuffled around a little bit, um, nothing too spectacular. Uh, we were really surprised in their magic phase, they 
we thought they were going to focus on getting a, a, at least one, uh, or yeah, they only really, really needed one, uh, race spell through on uh, the chariots. That would bring the champion back, and we would have to go through the duel again, and we wouldn't be out until our turn, and then they would have a full turn of shooting and magic on, on our character there. But it didn't do that, they focused quite a lot of their magic on the Scarab Swarms here, actually. Um, putting their faith in being able to uh, do some damage. That might have worked out, actually. Uh, they rolled a bit poorly in the combat afterwards. Um, and they also put up their usual protection on the Sphinx and raised that back a bunch. Um, I think we dispelled some missile on the uh, Questy Knights. That was our focus. We could pretty much only dispel one spell per turn and then they had free range to do whatever they wanted uh, otherwise. Um, they also pop popped up the Mage Black Gremlins over here, which turned out to be a mistake uh, because in the combat we killed the Scarab Swarms, a bit lucky, and we're able to reform and now we can, or pivot, and then we can charge in our turn, which is directly after. And we did, we also charged with the Lord and the Wesley Knights into the Archers, the Lord making contact with the Hierophant, killing him outright. Um, they even issued a duel with the Hierophant to limit... Oh, no, I didn't, don't really... No, I did, did that. But he did, and we killed him with the Lord. Um, and what else here? Yeah, we're... We keep shooting at the Sphinx, bring it down, but uh, it, it, it constantly comes back up again. Our knights popped up, um, uh, as did the uh, Shadowfire Stalkers over here. Yeah, uh, the uh, archers were killed, of course, and uh, then in their turn, this is after something very important happened, the Sentinel managed to cast the 16th spell of the game, and so the portal went up in smoke, killing the Lord and uh, severely damaging the Questy Knights. Uh, also killed a bunch of other th things, including the Sphinx. Um, this is after the explosion, with the portal gone. Uh, fortunately, they rolled Snake Eyes for the Shadow First Stalkers, so they were okay. And we're gonna kill the Scarab Swarms the next turn. And yeah, pretty much all that's left now is the lemurs, and yeah, that's the last picture as well. We did manage to close in on it, and uh, with, with uh, this unit, get a, get a charge on it. They do issued a duel with the sentinel, took it with an, uh, an assassin, did two wounds in the duel, or one, which was multi multiplied then, and killed the lemurs with the, the Bla Shadow for, no, with the Blackfur veterans, and the sentinel crumbled to death. So we did get their whole army. Uh, they never picked up any of the tokens over here, but we did pick up the one we put in our unit. Uh, so we won the scenario, and uh, won big on points. They did, they did kill some stuff though. Um, Swarm Priest, of course, the, the Lord. Half the points for this unit, I think. No, they, no, they were on the seven, they shouldn't. Oh, I don't know. Um, maybe we counted that. Uh, but in the end, we got a 19-1. So big victory for us. Um, so that was really, really nice and we're in, uh, I think, fifth place now in the tournament. Uh, doing pretty well for ourselves. Time for the fifth and final game of the tournament. We were on this scenario, a bunch of uh, objective zones uh, around the middle that were uh, activated one by one until everyone was active. And yeah, you, you scored points by holding them. Pretty much it just meant that where, whoever was doing better would get the objective, um, at least if, if it was skewed. Um, we were playing against the ringer list, um, which was commanded by the host and another guy. Um, the host was a bit preoccupied during this battle, being the last battle of the game, he had other things to take care of. And the other guy is quite a casual gamer, um, very nice guy, uh, but uh, doesn't uh, think through everything, uh, perhaps. Um, this was our deploy deployment. 
went for a lot of scoring in the middle, shooting where they could ignore cover the best, basically. And this was their army. The we have cave goblins with two medkits, some seekers, cave trolls, and a great green idol behind them. King scar with the king, um, pretty good gear on him. Uh, the warriors with a witch doctor, master of witchcraft, some raiders or cave goblins with two more medkits, and some rangers. He had for spells, he had three movement spells: um, Raven's Wing and two of the runes that make you move. So doing a lot of movement shenanigans, especially with medgits. Uh, he also had Vanguard and we moved up like this. We will focus on the right flank here first. Um, turn one for us, we, we went first. Shooting, saw a lot of misfires. Uh, I think the sails didn't do anything. The rotary guns here, they did some wounds to the um, Kingsguard. And then the cannon fired at the, at the Great Green Idol, but mishap and did some damage to itself. And then finally I decided to use my flamethrower on the uh, King's Guard as well. Um, they are only 5 up armor save, resilience 4 though. So with a trial and terror I'm wounding on 4 up, it can do a lot of damage. But I had a mishap, suffered 2 hits, wound automatically. AP2, I get a 6 up save, fail both of them, and I only have 2 health points on House Prefect. So he's dead. Turn 1, he's just gone. Um, not great, but as long as we stay within range of the other general, we still have very, very good uh, chance of staying, but we lose the Light and Reflexes, and uh, we, uh, if the uh, 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 Lord moves away, we are not in a good position with them. So that didn't feel too good. Uh, he moved up some wolf raiders to re uh, redirect me. Uh, not that I was that interested in charging, I think. Um, and then used movement spells to move up the goblins close to me and put some maggots through the unit and did a lot of damage with those actually. Um, I think I rolled a six and a seven, not a seven, that would have been impressive, a six and a five uh, respectively for the number of hits. Uh, I had put up my assassins now to deter him from charging me as well. Um, we used Raven's Wing to move away, uh, because without the general we have to make sure we're in range of the other general, so we're moving after him and not too keen on fighting anymore without lighting reflexes. Um, this assassin charged out um, to uh, scare away the raiders at a later point here, uh, you'll see why when we get to that. And we had popped up some feudal knights from the tunnel marker here. Uh, oh, right, and these goblins charged the uh, rotary guns and we fled. Uh, didn't want to have the goblins go move through around the building and be on our flank, so better to trap them against the building like this uh, with a failed charge. Um, knights pop up. The goblins turn around. The rangers here move into the objective zone. This makes them uh, have control of it. Uh, we pop up our Shadow First Stalkers, throw a bunch of weapons on the rangers, they panic and flee. We shoot the assails and the cannon at the goblins. And they actually pass their Discipline 5 the panic test. He failed the 9. Past the, uh, the five, um, which was unfortunate because then he could charge the knights. And he broke those and uh, killed them, and the Shadow First Stalkers panicked, panicked as well. Uh, so he cleaned up that flank pretty good, actually. But let's get back to the center of the table and the, or the rest of the table, rather. Because in our turn one, we also charged the Questing Knights and the Giant Rats into the Seekers who had vanguarded up. We put, I think, this, uh, boosted Deceptic Glamour on them in combat, and some other spells to, or, or Orisons to boost our combat uh, potential. And did pretty good, only four Seekers remained after all of that. But uh, we were in charge range 
of a bunch of things that, as it turned out, especially with the uh, war cry considered. Uh, so the trolls made it into the rats and the goblins into the knights. Uh, which felt bad, to say the least. Um, but we found a way to uh, to make it better. We put the 5 of Aeg Aegis Orison on the giant rats. And uh, he didn't have that many spells to help in combat. I think the only combat buff he had was the Septic Glamour. So we just went ahead and fought. And the 5 of Aegis saved quite a lot of wounds because he had 12 attacks with the trolls and uh, uh, two stomps, booning on two up, hitting on three up. And we still had five rats remaining after all of that. Killed the last of the Seekers, killed a bunch of goblins, and actually managed to win combat. If we had broken, then the trolls could have quite easily overran. We had Swiss Stride uh, into the uh, Blackfire veterans and they would have been dead, probably. Um, and uh, the knights could have broken as well and be killed by the goblins. So that would have been bad, but it didn't happen. We actually managed to win, much thanks to the five of Aegis. And uh, that meant there were two separate combats now, and we reformed a bit, um, or they reformed a bit to um, handle the situation. Uh, in our turn then, we charged the knights here into the flank of the goblins. I forgot to take pictures here, so I'll just talk you, talk you through it. We put some buffs on them. And uh, in the combat, we managed to break the goblins. We killed a lot of them. Had them flee from the feudal knights and pursued with the questing knights. So they turned around and were able to hit the trolls who hadn't fought yet. So they made it into the flank. The Quest Knight's target were the trolls, because we could discard their fortitude with their lethal strike then. And the uh, Lord is of course pretty good against them as well. So in that combat the Lord himself killed two trolls, the Quest Knight's two more. Four remained, they killed the uh, rats, but we still won combat by a lot. He wasn't steadfast, because he's in a forest. So he broke, and we pursued him down with the knights ending up like this. In his turn he moved the, the king just to face the lord and the questing knights and uh, moved the uh, great green idol around the flank to um, yeah to outline us basically. Um, we charged the lord into the king and uh, killed him. Yeah um, he had Decent armor save, but we uh, did four wounds total. Uh, I think I got a four up or five up save. We failed three of them, and uh, we did uh, a lot of wounds. Um, so the king is dead. Long live the king. Um, but he did stick around because this unit is at least that fast. Then he charged the great green idol into the flank of the lord. Uh, because at this time he's just desperate. The impact hits killed the uh, last remaining um, questing knight. But the lord just kills the great green idol. No issue at all. Strength 10 against resilience 8 is a good combo. And d6 wounds help as well. Um, by now he, he we charged the uh, raiders with the knights here. Uh, would have overrun into the flank of this unit. But he fled, and then we charged the assassin out to push them uh, through to here. That's why that happened. Um, yeah, here's the Great Grenadal gone. Um, then the assassin charges into the unit as well, and kill, or, or we break uh, the King's Guard. They flee. Um, we don't catch them. Uh, the Lord remains to uh, threat, be a threat to this unit instead. And I think these are some of the last pictures. Yes, this is the last picture. So um, we, in the end, we charge Lord into the King's Guard again and kill them. Uh, he then reforms and charges this unit and kills that too. He decides, yes, go for it. He, his his main goal this game was to kill this unit. So he he moves the warriors up to yeah, at least have a combat with them and gets killed in return. Um, so in the end, we killed everything except these goblins and he 
they didn't kill that much of us. They, for the first time, the Lord survived actually, uh, and, the, and the Lord moved through most of their army, and we got a 19-1 from this game, uh, because we got the objective as well. Which brings us to the final results, which were these. We did indeed do very well for ourselves, ending up at 67 battle points and 4th place. Only a single point below the 3rd place, and only 4 points below the 1st place. It was very even at the top. We would have needed to get 2 more points though to get 3rd um, place, because our strength of schedule wasn't very good. It was among the lowest, uh, lowest at the tournament actually, so we, we were lucky with the draw. Um, facing up against maybe some pretty easy opponents. Um, nevertheless, though, I'm, I'm very, very happy with this result. Um, happy with how the list functioned. Our combo with the Secrets of the, Secrets of the Doomblade on the Equiton Lord was strong. He did a lot of heavy lifting in many of the games, even though he died most of the games. And the Blackfire Veterans with the Sacred Reliquary was also a strong combo. Only the Imperial, Gu Imperial Guard were able to beat them, really. As well as our shooting being quite reliable, delivering most games. Um, yeah, it ended up working out, you can say. So, very good result. A very, very good tournament. Always happy to go, go to Tag Team. One of the, or no, not one of the, it's the best tournament of the year, for sure. And I'm hoping to go there ag again next year. With all that said, I guess all that's left to do is to say thank you for watching, and um, yeah, we'll see if I do any more content in the near future. If so, um, you're welcome, welcome to watch it. Thank you again, and goodbye.